Amazing innovations are being discovered as we advance in this new space age. It is a battleground that showcases the capabilities of each space company. The CEO and founder of SpaceX, Elon Musk, is developing an astonishing robotic launch tower, the Mechazilla. Do you know SpaceX's Mechazilla is even crazier than we thought? Now let's go over what makes SpaceX's Mechazilla so amazing. How does it benefit SpaceX's operations in terms of reusability and efficiency? And what impact would this have on the space race? Stay tight and keep watching as we investigate SpaceX and Mechazilla to find out the answers to all these questions. Mechazilla from SpaceX has come to life. Engineers working at Starbase on the 400-foot-tall Starship Orbital Launch Tower moved the robotic arms for the first time in October. The gigantic claw-like steel structure, dubbed Mechazilla by SpaceX founder and chief engineer Elon Musk, is meant to grab the Starship spaceship and super heavy rocket as it executes a propulsive landing. Elon's new Mechazilla launch tower in September 2021, Elon Musk and SpaceX's ideas of building the first ever robotic launch tower has already begun. The activities of SpaceX at the Starbase in Texas significantly increased the Starship project. They had already lifted and installed the quick disconnecting arms to the launch tower at the end of August. They decided to build and extend the quick disconnecting arms at the launch site. In the second part of Tim Dodd's Starbase's documentary, Elon Musk describes the functions of the quick disconnecting arms. He said, The quick disconnecting arms will hold the Starship and stabilize it above the super heavy rocket booster stacked on the launch mount. It'll be used to transport propellant to Starship just before the launch. While this was in progress, SpaceX was working on many other things, like frequently installing and replacing the Raptor engines on the Super Heavy Booster 4 prototypes. They also loaded liquid nitrogen into the orbital tank. SpaceX proposed to construct two permanent integration towers to form the Starship Super Heavy rocket. Each launch tower would be 480 feet tall. It will also be equipped with a 10-foot lightning rod at the top of the tower. The tower will be constructed in a way that one launch tower will be built adjacent to Pad A, and the other launch tower will be constructed adjacent to Pad B. Therefore, until the integration towers are completely constructed and readily operational, SpaceX will be making use of a 450-foot-tall crane to integrate the Starship and be super heavy. The crane will be up, mostly, but will be brought down to 250 feet during launches. It can also be used to move large articles and vehicles like tanks. The crane would be stored in the northwest section of the VLA when unused. SpaceX Mechazilla chopstick arms and the new Starship prototype have been going through various upgrades and fixing on a daily basis. SpaceX started building the first and second Mechazilla chopsticks to enable it to mount Super Heavy rocket boosters on the launch mount before stacking the Starship on Super Heavy. When the gigantic chopstick arms are installed on Mechazilla, it will not only be used for stacking Starships on Super Heavy, but it will be used for catching Starship and Super Heavy during return. Although Elon Musk stated that if any problem is incurred during the Megazilla test, it will be immediately rearranged and retested until it's perfect. This has been a reason for Elon Musk's success so far. He is a man who always risked everything during his rocket test, and resembles it once destroyed until he attains a positive result. The core purpose of building a Megazilla is for it to be able to replace the drone ships. However, if Mechazilla's ability to catch Super Heavy and Starship and also make the stacking faster and easier works out well, then this all shows that SpaceX and Elon Musk are simply aspiring for reusability. After fixing the Mechazilla chopsticks arms, SpaceX decided to fix its linear bearing, which would enable the up and down movement of the chopsticks. This will help SpaceX in catching and stacking Starships on a Super Heavy. SpaceX also reinstalled a new Vacuum Raptor engine on Starship SN20 aimed at making it pass its first orbital test successfully. While SpaceX Starship SN20 is preparing for its first orbital flight, SpaceX is also simultaneously working on a new Starship prototype called SN21. A Starship SN21 nose cone was seen in its tent at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. Most of its heat shield has already been fixed, and also TPMS has also been fixed on its nose cone. However, SpaceX will be needing its new Vacuum Raptor to power its new Starship prototype. So let's take a quick look at what his new SpaceX Raptor is all about. SpaceX Raptor is a family of full-float stage combustion engines manufactured and only developed by SpaceX for its rocket Starship. The engine is powered by a metal ox, cryogenic liquid methane, and LOX. 
rather than the common fuel used to power rocket engines, Carolox, used in SpaceX's previous rocket engines. The Raptor possesses more than twice the thrust of SpaceX's previous rocket engines that powers the Falcon 9. This advanced SpaceX rocket engine called Raptor is currently used in the Starship system both in the Super Heavy Lift, Starship Space Aircraft, and Super Heavy Booster. Starship is currently planned to be used in various applications, including satellite delivery for Earth orbits. The for deployment and delivery of SpaceX Starlink Constellation satellites, exploration, the moon landing, and Mars colonization missions. The SpaceX Raptor engine Raptor vacuum used to power Starship gives a thrust of about 2,200 kN or 500,000 IBF, while Blue Origin's rocket engine Blue Origin BE-4 used to power its spacecraft New Glenn gives it a thrust of 2,400 kN or 550,000 IBF. How many of these badass Raptor engines do you feel SpaceX will need to power Starship to make it to space? Well, based on what we have seen so far, SpaceX has made it clear that they will be installing 33 sea-level Mega Raptor engines to power the Super Heavy booster, while the Starship will be needing 6 Raptor engines. Three of the six Raptor engines in the Starship will be optimized for sea level, while the other three will be optimized for vacuum. The skirt, which is the bottomless section, houses the Raptor's engines, as well as the composite over the wrapped vessel for storing helium gas used to spin up the turbo pumps. The upper section consists of the liquid oxygen and liquid methane propellant tanks. The six Raptor engines combined together will give the Starship a thrust of about 14 MN, or 1400 TF, or 3,100,000 IBF. So basically, for Elon Musk to achieve his primary goal of a Starship making the flight from 100 to 10,000 times per year, and also sending thousands of Starships to colonize Mars very soon, he needs more land space to build more facilities and infrastructure like the Mechazilla Chop-6 launch tower, expansion of Starbase, manufacturing of more Vacuum Raptor engines in mass, manufacturing of more Starships. The need to conduct tests constantly without interruption is also very important. All these requirements are needed by Elon Musk and SpaceX in order to achieve his dreams of giving humanity a better life and making more discoveries in the future. Everyone sees the CEO of SpaceX in different views. Some people idolize Elon Musk as a hero of space technology and innovation. Others might see him as a crazy man, while some just see him as a man who thinks differently from others, pursuing his dreams to make humans have a better life. Elon Musk addressed this question in an interview. What do you want from a transportation system in your perfect world? Would you want something that costs half as much to travel, is just twice as quick, won't crash, and is waterproof? Elon Musk is working on a slew of mind-blowing projects to make this a reality. One of his inventions is known as the Hyperloop. Here's how it works. Once completed, it would take roughly 12 minutes to go from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, which would take 1 hour and 22 minutes by car. It will be powered by solar panels, and there will be several Hyperloop stations in each city, making travel easier and faster. There are now many Hyperloop strategic roles being developed, and all this will be a topic of attraction in Elon Musk's future. Elon Musk is always coming up with remarkable and creative ideas. All of Elon Musk's actions might definitely cause certain problems, but understanding what kind of success and positive achievement these little sacrifices will bring for humanity in the future, making lives easier and better, makes his actions commendable and worthwhile. Don't you feel the same? What do you think will happen in the next three to four years if Elon Musk's projects continue successfully? Do you feel Texas will benefit positively from all the bright innovations of Elon Musk and SpaceX? We would like to know what you feel and think about all this in the comment section below.